Hello there ladies and gentlemen, it's Smitty here from Tales of Gaming Addiction, a YouTube channel where we talk about gaming and all of that good stuff. Now today, I actually want to talk about something that's kind of a big deal really in the eSports world lately, um, and it ties around to this update because I completely forgot about it until this update came out, and it's of course the Summer Games update to Overwatch. Now, the Summer Games update ties into the Rio Summer Games or the Rio Olympiad, Rio Olympics, whatever you want to say, the Olympics games be being held in Rio at the time this video comes out, but recording it's tomorrow, the opening ceremony, and odds are I'll probably be watching it drunk and commentating about it anyway. Beyond that, of course, this update, uh, a couple of things we want to talk about. First of all is what's in the update, which I think is rather nice. Your loot boxes from leveling up and from purchases can become... Summer Games loot boxes, and now these loot boxes will give you access to the Summer Games stuff because you cannot purchase it normally. So instead of using your in-game currency, the in-game coins to buy stuff, you have to unlock it through the loot box. Thankfully, there is so few of it. Also, you probably get a couple anyway. So the skins are tied around uh, countries, as are the Olympiads. So Tracer, who we know is from London in the UK, she represents Team GB. And therefore wears Team GB uh, track and field uniform. She has an alternate one as well, specifically for the Summer Games, which I think is rather cool. Um, Lucio is representing Jamaica, and he too has an alternate variant. Zarya represents Russia. Torbjorn is representing Sweden. Uh, Mercy represents the medical staff, but also I think Germany she has a skin for. Um, they're all on the screen for you, all the ones I could find. And that's a really cool part of the update. The second and the most enjoyable part of this update by far. In fact, I put more time into the Brawl mode than playing competitive, to which I got ranked as well, which is amazing. Yeah, the Brawl mode is the Lucio Ball. So Lucio Ball is a 3v3 Brawl mode um, where you play as Lucio and you play football. It's basically Rocket League, which is kind of um, cool. Um, at the time of this recording, though, I have found that some people have glitched it out and they've been able to play as Widowmaker or Diva and just being able to switch hero for whatever reason. And I think that's just the way the brawl mechanic works, the fact that you can pick a hero at the start and the game does load incredibly quick. You don't even get to see the Lucio screen come up. It's just straight into loading, 3, 2, 1, go. There's no loading or hero selection phase. I think that's what's causing the glitch. But I'm getting sidetracked. So the purpose of the update, though, why it's got my attention. Now, give you some context to this. A few years ago, I want to say three, it might have been two, the International Olympic Committee, IOC, were debating about having esports at the Olympics. Um, there was a bit of a debate about this. It's been a debate that's been ongoing for those of us who love esports and keep track of the whole thing mainly because of the uh, mentality to an intellectual thing. I can't really think of the words to say. Basically, people were comparing it to chess and checkers, go, you know, these sorts of games played by intellectual people, not your average Joe, if that makes sense. Like, your average Joe can go play football and maybe get up to the competitive level but your average Joe really doesn't want to play chess at the competitive level. You know, it's got that kind of mentality around it. You can't really sponsor a chess team because you only have one person, really. But anyway, um, that was some of the debate going on. And I think seeing the numbers that esports pulls in is kind of the reason why the IOC said, OK, we shall trial it under the e-games. I'll put links below for... Um, all this relevant stuff I'm going to bring up. So, yeah, the eGames idea is that eSports will be a competitive thing. Now, at the time of recording this, and just double-checking my notes, they haven't said what game will be at Rio, or any games at all. I know that it's going to be trialed at Rio. It's on their main site. It's going to be at the... Uh, British House in Praglage Rio, Brazil. I probably just butchered all that Portuguese, and I know um, a couple of people will probably butcher my English back. But 
it's kind of cool that people get to go to this event and represent their country and not a team. So there's no Fnatic versus Origin in League of Legends anymore now. It's France versus Britain and there's national pride on the line, which to me brings out the absolute best in people because if there's anything you can do socially, it's fall back to your country rather than fall back onto an ideal or something like that. Sounding a bit nationalist and a bit Brexit, but hey, God save the Queen. It's a national anthem. So the e-games themselves currently will be at Rio in 10 days of this recording, so they're going to be at the 14th. It's kind of cool. Um, again, haven't specified a game, but they will officially be the first full round will be at Pyongyang in South Korea in 2018 and then Tokyo in 2020. Super awesome. There will be domestic events to qualify you to go to the event if you want to support Team GB. As per the um, International Olympic Committee rule that states you need to be in the top 50 in your country to represent them in a specific sport. I think it's the official ruling or something like that. It's to stop things like Eddie the Eagle and uh, what's his name? The guy from South Africa that couldn't swim but took part in the Olympic swimming. You know, stuff like that, which is a bit disappointing, but it makes sense. Uh, beyond that, of course, we'll have four teams in Rio in 10 days' time. We will have, obviously, the UK, who will be going, and we have supporting them, in a way, the British Esports Association, which I'll go into at the end of this video. Uh, we've also got E-Team Canada, E-Team Brazil, and E-Team USA. And I actually think those four country choices are rather good out of all of them. Because we know British and American esports stars. I can't think of any Canadians off the top of my head. And I definitely can't think of any Brazilians off the top of my head. So we could see some new talent here. And if they're playing something like League or Dota or Counter-Strike, um, Overwatch, even hell, Rocket League, why not? Let's, let's really throw them all out there. Let's have competitive Minecraft Hunger Games. And I really want to see what they'll pull out. And I'll give you my thoughts and views after the event has passed. But this is still a pretty cool deal. Which is the reason why Overwatch has had this big update as well. In case you hadn't noticed. So I suspect um, Overwatch, or Blizzard Entertainment at least, is supporting this whole eGames initiative. Which is cool because now this is the final hurdle for eSports to go from not mainstream but has popularity to mainstream enough to compete with the likes of physical sports like football, rugby, cricket, tennis and everything else. And who knows, we might actually have um, this e-games become like the International Olympic Committee and they'll determine what events. So IEM Katawis, my certainly DreamHack Summer Winter, those could be like your three Grand Slams in tennis. So if you're a team fanatic and you won all three of those events, you're on a winning team here or you're on a winning strategy of a sort to win a game. Now, on to the second half of this, which I brought up, which is the British Esports Association. Just want to give it some um, exposure here. and might be kind of cool. So, the British Esports Association is going to be a brand new governing body for British Esports. So, we'll, so they will be dealing with events, press, um, the rules, and everything else specific to esports in general. So, you can play esports but you must be over the age of 18 or the age of 21 to play x game or y game or something like that and i find that's actually pretty cool now that the uk in general is embracing esports i want to say a lot quicker than the rest of europe um i don't know if the eu has anything in place for esports i definitely know all the big esports events are being held over in germany because we've got the LCS studios over there, and that's where Riot's EU West servers are based. Is in links are in the description below. Um, I actually want to hear what you guys think more than anything else about the whole e games in Rio, and then going on to South Korea and Japan in 2020. You know, I I want to really to generate a debate about this. So let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Hope you've enjoyed the least ball highlights that I've got for you. I'm gonna go back and play some more and try and see if I can't score a hat trick. Until then, I'll see you next time.